reputation is excellent in God's sight. Let your mind dwell on these things. Let your mind dwell on these things. Whatever makes the child in you sing, let your mind dwell on these things. Whatever is true, whatever has honor, whatever a good reputation is excellent in God's sight. Let your mind dwell on these things. Let your mind dwell on these things. Whatever makes the child in you sing, let your mind dwell on these things. Let your mind dwell on these things. Let your mind a child and you sing let your mind dwell on these things amen good morning we'd like to welcome you to mayfield first united methodist church so glad to be able to greet you this morning in the holy name of jesus we celebrate both sacraments of our church this morning the wonderful sacrament of holy baptism as well as a celebration of the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion. And I'm so glad that each of you is able to be here for this wonderful experience of worship that we have in store for us today. God has promised to meet us when we gather together in his name. And so God is surely with us. I do invite you to use the tear-off section of the bulletin this morning to let us know that you've been with us this morning. Uh, we'll be grateful for the opportunity to pray for you and with you about some concerns in your life, to share joys with you, also to have you sign up for the Wednesday night meal. I would also just point your attention to the many announcements, opportunities, things that are listed in the bulletin. I do want to let you know uh, at the end of our service as we celebrate Holy Communion, most of you know that we have a communion offering separate from our regular offering. Folks, bring that with them up to the altar and leave it on the altar rail as they kneel and pray or as they're about to return to their seats. This morning's Christmas offering, con, <laughs> this, that was a hint. This morning's communion offering will go to the community Christmas connections work in our community for this upcoming holiday season. So I encourage you to participate in that. It's not in the bulletin, but we've been praying about and talking about the potential of starting a Celebrate Recovery ministry in our church. There will be a praying and planning meeting for that on Monday evening, November the 10th at 5.30. That may not work for all of you who are interested. There will be other times, but if you want to leave a note on your tear-off section today that you're interested in that ministry, that would be helpful. The Nerd is a play that is being presented beginning this coming weekend by the Purchase Players at the Community Performing Arts Center. I have a part in that play. Cheryl Hartig behind me is the director, and Jonathan Bennett, who's singing in the choir, is our sound guy for the production. And it'll be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, both of the next two weekends. And I just wanted to extend an invitation to you to come and, and be a part of the crowd that assembles for this comedy. Also had a... Happy and sad phone call this morning from Kim Brand. She shared with us last week about her father's condition. And thankfully, he does not need to linger any longer. He has gone home this morning to be with the Lord uh, about one hour and 10 minutes ago. And so we're thankful for Kim. She wanted me to express her love to all of you and to thank you for your continued prayers and the support that she has felt from the church family. So I thank you all for that as well. It is All Saints Day. It's not a bad day to go home. And it wouldn't be a bad day for any of us to go home if Jesus were to come back today. I hope we would all feel in our hearts that we are ready as well. George certainly uh, was expressing in these last hours his own readiness uh, to leave the body behind and go to a better, better world. So let's pray together this morning as we begin our worship. God, we thank you so much for the blessing of knowing that your promises are true. We thank you for George Pickens, Lord, and all that he has meant to this church over these many years and to this community in Mayfield and Graves County. And today, God, we not only celebrate George, but all of the faithful who have gone before us in this past year in particular, but God, even as we think about the ages past, 
we thank you so much that we do stand on the shoulders of wonderful people who have done their very best to love you and to love others. And so, God, we pray that you would help us to imitate the best of their examples today and that you would help us to be more like Jesus because we're gathered here together in his name. Amen.
We'll remain standing together during our litany for All Saints Day, during which time we will specifically remember those from our congregation's membership that have passed on in the past year. Loving God in whom there is no shadow or change, we thank you for the gift of life eternal and for all those who have served you and now rest from their labors. We thank you for all the saints remembered and forgotten, for those dear souls most precious to us. Today, we give thanks for those who during the last 12 months have died and entered into glory. We bless you for their life and love and rejoice for them and for their eternal life with you. Almighty God, mindful of all those souls who have gone on ahead of us, teach us to follow the best of their example to the best of our ability. Teach us, Lord, to feed the poor in body or spirit. Teach us, dear God, to support and comfort the mourners and the repentant. Teach us, Holy Spirit, to encourage the meek and stand with them in crisis. Teach us, Heavenly Father, to affirm those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Teach us, dear Savior, to cherish and learn from the merciful. Teach us, Jesus, to be humbled by and stand with the peacemakers. Help us clearly recognize what it means to be called the children and saints of God and to know we are to be your saints. Not because of our own inclination or strength, but simply by the call and the healing holiness of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Holy God, we remember and thank you for the lives of Raymond Burnett. Marilyn Coltharp. Hal Gibson. Diane Miller. Dennis Williamson. Red Wolf. Garbaline Wolf. Other dear family members and dear friends who have passed from this life in the past year, including George Pickens. Let's continue to thank God and to celebrate the saints as we sing a glorious anthem for the saints of Christ, for all the saints.
be seated. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. We'd like to invite the Edwards family, any members of the family who might like to come. We especially uh, need the little one. I see that Grace is coming. One day and before too long, she will be coming up here on her own power. Come on up, Billy and Amanda. Emma, you too, right, sweetheart? That's wonderful. I'm so glad that you came up too. And we're so grateful for your loving family. I'm so glad that all of you are, are here today. Billy and Amanda, I do want to ask you before we celebrate the baptism on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Will you nurture this precious child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and by your example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself to profess her faith openly and to lead a Christian life? Congregation, I ask you all, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We will surround Grace with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and this precious little one who receives it, that we all may experience afresh our baptisms, the renewal of our souls being clothed in righteousness throughout our lives and particularly for grace that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. <coughs> Name to be given this child. Grace Madden. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I will be very careful. Grace Madeline. I baptize you in the name of the Father <laughs> and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
She's so beautiful. She is. Let's pray once again. Father, we love you. We give you great thanks that on this All Saints Day, even as we have known the pain and the grief of parting ways temporarily with loved ones, we have the great blessing of knowing that you have brought this precious child into the world, into a wonderful family. God, we, we thank you. We bless your name for that and for this precious and darling and beautiful little girl. She is made in your image, Lord, and we just look forward to seeing her grow in that image throughout her life so that you may use her for your holy purposes. In Jesus' name, amen. And now our younger children will make their way forward for our children's moment. And as they do, we'll be singing one verse of the hymn, I Sing a Song of the Saints of God. Sing a song of the saints of God, patient and brave and true. the good shepherd is who is the good shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep hmm? Jesus, Jesus Jesus I dropped a hint Jesus calls himself the good shepherd and he says that his sheep and all of us are his sheep that that his sheep hear his voice and they recognize his voice and they follow him. And I have in my hands today a little, it's just a little packet of tissues, but you see what's on the tissues? Sheep, little lambs. And all of you are, are God's little lambs. And I, and I wanna be able to use these tissues later, so I wanted to use a member of our church who's not able to be here today, he's on vacation. He gave me this pocket knife a couple of years ago and I wanna use this pocket knife to open this because I think that my thumb won't do a very good job, so I'm gonna use the knife, okay? Ready? Here we go. What's wrong? Well, it should be easy, but, but I hear that a knife should open something. What, what's the problem? That you, the knife ain't open. What? <laughs> Silly me. The knife has to be open for it to actually do anything. Hmm. Let's see now. If I, oh, oh look at that. The package opens right up because I opened up the knife, right? Thank you very much, brother. I appreciate the, the help. You know, this is similar to our life with God because God has many things in store for us, but we have to be open. God gives us the tools that we need. God gives us everything that we need, but sometimes we have to do the next thing. We have to open ourselves up. We have to be ready to receive what God has for us. Can you remember that today? We are God's sheep. We listen for his voice. We try to follow him, but he opens the way so that we can do that. God, we thank you for these precious little ones. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless them as they worship you this morning in Children's Church. Lord, we're thankful that we are all your sheep and that you care for us and that you lay down your life for us. We thank you for that today in Jesus' name. Amen. thinking about what it means to be open today, consciously receptive to what God has for us in our lives. And so as we receive our morning offering, we'll also be singing a song that dedicates our hearts to that purpose, open my eyes that I may see. But first, let's pray once again. God, thank you that you have 
opened the way for us because of what Jesus has done. God, thank you that you give us a choice whether or not we will open ourselves, whether or not we will be receptive. God, you do not program us as robots. You give us free will. You show us the way, but you don't force us to go that way. And God, while it might be easier sometimes if you did that, we thank you for the richness of life because you have given us the ability to make these choices, to use our minds, to pray from our hearts and to be guided by you instead of forced by you. God, today we pray that you will bless us as we give back to you. Lord, those of us who are able to give financially and also, Lord, those of us who during this time of offering will simply offer ourselves, our hands and our feet, our lives of service for you. Bless all of the gifts, Lord, multiply them and make them be productive and fruitful for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing for the reading of our scripture. Our scripture reading today comes from the, the book of First Seth, Seth, ooh, I can say this, I promise. First Thessalonians. Got it. Chapter 2, verses 9 through 13. Hear these words. Brothers and sisters, I am sure you remember how hard we worked. We labored night and day while we preached to you God's good news. We didn't want to cause you any expense. You are witnesses of how we lived among you. God is also a witness that we were holy and godly and without blame. You know that we treated each of you as a father treats his own children. We gave you hope and strength. We comforted you. We really wanted you to live in a way that is worthy of God. He chooses you to enter his glorious kingdom. We never stop thanking God for the way you received his word. You heard it from us but you didn't accept it as a human word. You accepted it for what it really is. It is God's word. It is at work in you who believe. This is the word of God for the people of God. 
We are invited to the table of the Lord and not by some great human institution or by any particular person except the particular person who was also 100% God. Jesus himself makes the invitation that we would come and receive these gifts of grace which we believe are not just bread and juice, but they're actually transformed into the real presence of Jesus in our lives to feed us, to strengthen us, and to sustain us. You might follow along on the Grow, Pray, and Study Guide, which is always printed in the middle of the bulletin. You'll notice it's a little bit different today if you're accustomed to it. There aren't any blanks for us to fill in, but there is one big blank in the center uh, during, in which you may make any notes that you might like to make, but I wanted to make a very quick review of where we've been these past several weeks together. In the message that began our series called The Long Run, we talked about the fact that the Christian life isn't a sprint, it's a marathon, and the fact that God names us saints means that that's a designation not earned by our behavior, but bestowed by that relationship that we have with Jesus himself. In the message called Difference Makers, we celebrated a lot of the great United Methodist women and also other, other great women saints of the church. But we also celebrated together this fact that it is in Christ we find out who we are and what we are living for. 
A couple of weeks ago then, we talked about what it means for a saint to be consistently faithful. The Thessalonian saints were consistently faithful. The way that they did that was they imitated the Lord and they became a model to other believers. And because they became a model to others, God's message rang out from them. They become, became like a magnet, like a magnet drawing people and their community to the love of Christ. Last week, we talked about being courageously caring. And we noted the fact that sometimes to really care requires great courage. We can be caring and compassionate in the way that we live out our lives in a general sort of way, but there will be moments when we are pressed, when we are challenged and called into a more daring, risk-taking way of caring that makes us put everything on the line for the people we love. And God loves them even more than we do. And so we talked a lot about the fact that sometimes God just calls us to put it all out there for the sake of other people and for the sake of the gospel of Jesus. If you haven't held a little baby in a long time, I recommend it. It brings a lot of joy and hope to our lives, doesn't it? To see the beautiful children gathered at the front of the church and to hold a precious baby and to know that God's design for that child's life is that she become more and more and more like Jesus throughout her life. And what we essentially did together as God's family here a little while ago is that we told Grace that we would be God's saints before her in her life and as an example to her life. And so this morning, I wanna challenge us that to be a saint, to be the kind of saint who will be able to live out that example before this precious little girl, we must be consciously receptive. We must be open to what God has for us, even when what God has for us isn't the thing we were looking for, isn't what we were expecting, isn't what we wanted to hear that particular day or time. God asks us to be consciously receptive, having an awareness that we need every day to wake up and say yes again. We need to say yes again. God, I will be open again today. I will be open. And if the morning didn't work out very well, you can say yes <laughs> at lunch and stay a yes for the rest of the day. We can always go back and say yes and start again to remain open. I want us to sing a prayer together uh, that we've sung together before. Another prayer that expresses this openness. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. To reach out and touch him and say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. Let's sing it again. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch him and say that we love him. Amen. I learned a song when I first became a very serious believer. 
I learned a song called Your Loving, and it was written by a guy named Paul Clark. And Rick and Jim are sitting right near each other there. One's an electrician and one's a broadcasting guy. And this is the only song I know that puts both of those worlds together and equates them to what God's love does for us, that reception, the ability to receive a signal. Uh, that's something that's got, that God has built into us, but it's not something that we're required or forced to do, you know, to, to hear from God what God wants to say. And so I wanted to sing it for you this morning called, uh, called Your Loving. Your loving sends the light of life, transmitting forth a lasting message. My heart receives the signal of your love and care for me. When I was young, you were my friend. I saw you every day. I went my separate way in life, but now I'm here to stay. Your loving sends the light of life, transmitting forth a lasting message. My heart receives the signal of your love and care for me. They say that lightning won't strike twice, but sometimes it's not true Cause I've been struck so many times By bolts of love from you Your loving sends the light of life Transmitting forth a lasting message My heart receives the signal of Your love and care for me And if by chance I hear this song on my radio your broadcast waves are in the air you're everywhere i go your loving sends the light of life transmitting forth a lasting message my heart receives the signal of your love and care for me your loving sends the light of life transmitting forth a lasting message my heart receives the signal of your love and care for me I had an unlikely friend in college. Well, I mean unlikely because he was a great outdoorsman and I was a great indoorsman. <laughs> and we all at college, we gravitated, you know, to the people who were most like us. It's what we do, isn't it? We're, we, we like to be pretty homogenous, I think, for the most part, even though we know we live in a very, very diverse world and that God's blessed people with wonderful gifts. We tend to go around people who think like us and act like us and pretty much look like us. And so at college, I hung out with people who liked drama and music and going out and doing things like spending the weekend with youth groups. Roger wasn't that same kind of person. And I remember as he became involved in the campus ministry, 
that there were times when I could just tell, I, I, I didn't, he and I didn't, what do you say around here, jihaw? <laughs> he and I didn't jihaw. And so there was something about me that just sort of rubbed Roger the wrong way, and I didn't really feel it exactly the same way about Roger, but I sort of thought to myself, well, Roger's in this kind of camp, and I'm over here in this kind of camp, so let's just let it all be at peace and everything's just fine. Well, one day, something happened. I don't even remember the incident, but it triggered sort of an altercation where Roger actually challenged me about my attitude about something. And for the next two or three days, as we came around the campus ministry, neither one of us stayed away. We had to be around each other a lot, but I knew that he was upset with me and I kind of probably gave it back to him just a little bit. It's very, very fascinating though, <laughs> that out of that tension, out of that conflict, Roger and I started to know each other. Guess what Roger did? He invited me fishing. I like to fish, but I don't know how. And all these years I've liked to fish, I've never really learned anything about it. I just sometimes go out and try to catch a few. But Roger took me out fishing and we started to play soft. See, the transition here, I'm becoming an outdoorsman. Roger he gets me on the softball team, we go out fishing, then Roger starts to go with me when we go out on weekends to spend the weekend with youth groups and he's one of my very dearest friends in the world. I don't do a very good job of keeping in touch with friends who are from days gone by, but whenever I think about Roger, my heart is glad because he'll always tell me what he thinks, even if I don't really wanna know. And he will always be someone who will find something to encourage in me or in anybody else that he comes across. I couldn't give Roger any higher accolades than I want to give him before you today, but I almost missed it. I almost missed the opportunity to know and love this wonderful guy who, I, who has meant so much to me in my life over the years. I almost missed it because I put up a little blockade. You know, there were things that just didn't seem to be working in the direction of a friendship between the two of us. But as soon as I was open, as soon as that conflict actually opened us up to a deeper relationship with each other, something really wonderful happened. And I have a dear friend. He's also a brother in Christ. And now he leads small groups at a great church in the Cincinnati area. And I'm so proud that he's my friend. Henri Nouwen is a great Roman Catholic writer and he has written many, many things that have encouraged people. And Maxine Easley a couple of weeks ago shared this with me. I wanted to share it with you today as a reflection on what it means for us to be God's saints, consciously receptive, you know, open, open to something that we weren't expecting. Nouwen says the church is a very human organization, but it's also the garden of God's grace. It is a place where great sanctity keeps blooming. Saints are people who make the living Christ visible to us in a special way. See, that's what we've gotta be for grace. Some saints have given their lives in the service of Christ and his church. Others have spoken and written words that keep nurturing us. Some have lived heroically in difficult situations. Others have remained hidden in quiet lives of prayer and meditation. Some were prophetic voices calling for renewal. Others were spiritual strategists setting up large organizations or networks of people. Some were healthy and strong. Others were quite sick and often anxious and insecure. And here is the part of what Nowen writes that is especially appropriate to this morning's passage where Paul compliments the Thessalonians for their openness, for their receptivity to God's word. Now and says, but all of them, and if you're a saint, if you believe in Jesus, he's your Lord and Savior, you're a saint, all of them, all of us, all of them in their own ways lived in the church as in a garden where they heard the voice calling them the beloved. Do you hear that this morning? That you are the beloved daughter, son of God. They lived 
in the church as in a garden where they heard the voice calling them the beloved and where they found the courage to make Jesus the center of their lives. It's not a safe life. It's not a risk-free life. There aren't any guarantees. Raymond's family is here this morning, several of them. So grateful that you're here today. We love you all. I'll miss Raymond every day. There aren't any guarantees of what life will hold for us except the promises of God, which the Bible says are always yes because of Jesus, because of Jesus. And so today we're thankful and we're happy because God's given us a choice And if you're with me, you wanna say yes today. Yes to the opportunity to say, God, I'm open. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I'm a little bit afraid. Some days, a lot afraid, but I know that God will be with me. I know that no matter what happens, God won't ever leave me. God won't ever forsake me. I will remain open. Remain open with me. And when you see me closing off, whap me upside the head and tell me to stop that. And I'll, well, I won't actually whap you upside the head, but I'll try to remind you every so often that that's who we are. We're the people who are called by God to remain open, to be receptive. Let's prepare our hearts now for the celebration of Holy Communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, dear friends, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. That proves God's love toward us. Dear friends, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray. Holy God, our Father, we give you thanks. Thanks that you have opened the way through the gift of your Son, Jesus, that we might be your saints who cry out around your altar, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Holy are you, dear God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. We remember that on the night during which he gave himself up, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to you, Father, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so this morning, holy God, we do remember. We remember your mighty acts in Jesus Christ and we continue to offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit, we pray on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and of juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together 
at his heavenly banquet. This we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. If those who are assisting and serving today would go ahead and make their way forward, while you do, I will remind us all that we celebrate what's called open communion in our United Methodist tradition. That means that you don't have to be a member of this church or of any church in order to receive the gift that Jesus has prepared for you to come to the table to which he has invited you. Also, we celebrate communion by intinction. Your server will tear off a piece of the bread and lay it in your outstretched hands and then you may dip that in the cup.
together. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy praise. Winds of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song, and sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of Y'all, before I dismiss us with our benediction, Raymond Burnett's dear sister, Verna, is here this morning and wanted to just share a word. God bless you, Verna. Uh, we love your family, and we, we, as I said, we'll miss Raymond every day. But I'm so glad that you were here for All Saints Day. What a, what a great time to remember the promises of Jesus in our lives. Let's have our, receive our benediction. As we leave this sanctuary today, we continue to ask that we remain consciously receptive to God's word and God's voice through the Holy Spirit in our lives. In Ephesians 1, Paul writes, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for all of us who believe. Now may each of us who know that hope experience those riches and live through that power in the week to come. Amen.